I get asked a lot what type of extensions or what theme I'm using for my actual VS Code. Um, I used to be a long time Sublime Text user and I've always been a fan of it. It's super lightweight and fast and I think that's why I preferred it. I, I used almost no like plugins or anything for it besides maybe syntax highlighting and, and for some formatters. But honestly, lints and stuff like that um, get in my way and I actually dislike a lot of them. Um, I actually want to ins uninstall this one. Another video I did was kind of uh, messing with my stuff. So I'm gonna, there's a few in here that are really cool to use and some that are just kind of like, I don't need these. I don't know why I have them. So um, maybe even this, I don't really use Git inside of VS Code like a lot of people. Um, same with this. I just, I like things minimal to be honest. But I figured I'd walk through first at least the themes that I have going on. So if I go into edit and where is the actual themes? Where it's somewhere, preferences, themes, this, this, this. okay. These are the, the very small handful that I have. Um, a while, I would say almost a year ago or something, Sarah Drasner, who's kind of a view yes person in the wild, who's really good with CSS and everything too, released a new theme that's called Night Owl. And it's been my go-to ever since. I don't really prefer the italics, so I sw switched those off. But this is kind of how it looks. We can go between different ones. Uh, of course, there's the Monakai. I think that's how you say it. Uh, I think those are defaults, but then I went through a period where I wanted some light themes trying to experiment with that Sometimes my eyes prefer lighter But the contrast between for code anyway, I think uh, Light themes are just tough. So there's actually a, a night owl light that I like But I, I just I tend to use honestly the, the dark themes primarily They just are easier on my eyes and I'm just used to it. So uh, with that all being said, we got, um, I'm going to close this. I've got quite a few extensions installed, nothing like major. I don't like to really use my VS code install as like a IDE. Like some people, I don't like everything in one place, to be honest. I like to flip between screens, you know, um, especially for my, on my laptop, my main computer that I'm not recording this on, I use an actual like 34 inch monitor, which is a widescreen and it's curved. But um, I can put up like three windows in one one monitor and just be okay. So I, I just kind of prefer that workflow. I like everything up, but not everything within VS Code. And that's one critique I have of VS Code is when I would want to open the same project open in a new window, I can't really do it like you could with Sublime Text. So I could have two two versions of the app or whatever I'm working on up and two editors. I think VS Code prefers you use like different panels, which is great, but honestly coding like that's stressful. So I don't like having two things open at once in that regard, uh, usually. Sometimes it's necessary if you need to really copy certain things like strings or something. But anyway, I have odds and ends in terms of quality of life improvements. This one's auto adding brackets and in string interpolation. So if you're writing anything in Ruby that's gonna be interpolated, it just kind of automatically adds it. Um, I'm experimenting with different formatters for CSS and beta, like uh, SCSS. Um, I haven't found one that I'm just in love with, but this one I installed, I think just yesterday or something. It helps with indentation and stuff. When I save the file, I, I just kind of save a lot of time doing that instead of trying to go through and tab through everything. And I said tab, but I use spaces when I code. Um, so any tab formats to two spaces for me. And that's just, I just prefer that. Um, I'm surprised this kind of in, uh, extension isn't just part of VS Code. It's the uh, the bracket pair colorizer. So when you're cursing over a line, the ending bracket or something will actually color to a specific point and kind of look like this, like a rainbow effect. It's, I, w I don't care that it's color personally. It's just more or less, is it obvious that it's the end of the line? That's what I'm looking at. Um, I think these are extensions just from dependencies of others. Um, I finally found an extension that formats ERB files. For the longest time, I couldn't find anything that would automatically do it. Um, you do need to install a third-party actual Ruby gem to do it uh, because it's Ruby. 
Uh, but it, it seemingly works quite well, and, and I prefer to leave like blank. There's an option to leave blank lines, and I prefer that instead of like just cramming everything up one by one. I don't even know if I installed this. Maybe I did. I don't know. Get lens is kind of kind of nice. I don't really make use of it like I, I could, but um, I don't know. It's neat to see like when you last co committed a line like in the comments area there or whoever changed it last, um, especially on a team, it's, it's quite nice. You can see who, who made a change and you can go directly to them if you have a question kind of thing. I like that. Um, Headwind is a nice extension. It's just really great to, for Tailwind users specifically. specifically. That's, that's me in general, I love Tailwind. I really love the fact that this orders them in a sane way, like, it, it reorders your classes wherever you add it to your, your actual um, element. Um, it has some quirks with where you use classes, but you can probably, I, don't, I didn't go deep on it, but based on my needs, it works just out of the box really well. So you'll see here, it actually updates when you, he saves, he or she. Um, there he goes. And it just kind of provides some sense of consistency uh, across your project. So if you're using a lot of Tailwind classes, like I do on certain elements, uh, it just kind of gets harder or easier in that regard. Another like quality of life one, just knowing where the end of the tag is, I like to have that visual. Um, sometimes I'm working in long forms or code that's just a pain in the ass to, to read. And it's, especially with Tailwind, it kind of gets hard on the eyes. So that helps. Um, some of these I think are built-ins. There's a project manager. I don't know why I even installed this. And of course Rails, uh, the the default, I think gem, it's just got some snippets and stuff that's nice. So you can use the uh, snippet command to kind of enter certain partials or content for blocks, yield blocks, all those nice things in Rails. Um, I tend, I don't use these, I don't use any of my extensions like to heart, like some people, but I find myself, if I'm repeating something, I'll reach for it often. Um, the biggest thing I use a lot in, in the VS code editor itself is sorting. I really like to sort things like alphabetically or like descending or ascending based on that. This is a nice one. Rails DB schema is kind of just autocomplete for um, validation. So if you have stuff in your HTML or in your models and you're trying to remember the name of things, this will kind of help you based on your schema. So that's nice. Uh, since the schema is way buried in the config, usually it's it's kind of really nice to have in, in the toolbox. Ruby, of course, we need Ruby. Um, I just kind of use it as is. I don't really like to use RuboCop or anything. I'm sure my code would look better if I did, but I honestly hate when my editor gets in my way and I'd rather just get the error and fix it. Maybe I'd save time otherwise, but I don't know. Uh, more snippets for Rails. I probably really don't need these. I don't know. Um, I don't use it that much, but hey, whatever. Uh, stimulus JS, of course, we need support just to have those things in the app. You can actually click to the method on the the HTML definition and go straight to the file, which is pretty handy. Uh, I should do that more. I don't that much, but it helps um, kind of point things out. Tailwind CSS and IntelliSense, uh, this is a godsend in terms of knowing what you have in your config file and or just knowing what classes um, you may have duplicated or that conflict with each other um, in, in CSS and, and whatnot. So this is pretty nice in terms of writing actual CSS when you need to and then um, just previewing what the actual class obtains or has. So a lot of cool stuff. You can go balls to the wall in terms of uh, languages to include and emit emit stuff. So I really like this library. Uh, Vuter or vet, Vetter, I don't know if it's how you call it, but um, very nice snippet library for Vue.js. I, I, I use Vue if I'm going to reach for anything JavaScript at the moment. 
as well as stimulus um, and just use this and mostly when i create a new single file component is when i reach for something like this I'll, i don't want to type the the script tag the style tag the template export default all that crap so much setup i feel like if there was less of that in a view world it would be great um of course beautify i enjoy these little libraries they have opinionated you know use cases but you can customize them if you really want to i tend to use the defaults and just go to town so and that's about it um i don't know that i use tons of extensions that you know just are amazing and whatnot but just kind of where i'm at with everything i'm trying to remember what yeah i use fira code for my font um i've used this for a number of years now i just prefer it it's got all the ligatures and everything you need for code I really don't like italicized code or the look of an italicized font in my code. Uh, but this has like these really big fat arrows um, when you need to do comparisons and stuff. Or if you do like greater than or equal, it'll actually do like a, a nice character instead. And it's just neat to see. Um, so yeah, I could go through a lot of my settings. I don't know that there's a bunch here that's worth pretty much always keep my sidebar open. I don't know. Some people use it on the right. I, I don't. Um, I tend to honestly, I'm on my other, on my other computer. I don't even like having like multiple projects open in this side. I, I turn like everything off, especially when the um, VS code tries to autocomplete everything for you or suggest things, all that shit turns, I get turned off um because it's super annoying and it impacts my flow. That's a quick walkthrough. I don't know if this, you know, was beneficial if it was cool i just liked you know sharing my setup some people prefer to see you know what i'm working with and why but yeah so hopefully you enjoyed this if you did let me know i can share more stuff about my setup or my workflow um anything in particular i have in mind just let me know in the comments all right peace